All right, class, today's lesson is going to be about vertebrate animals, and we're going to discuss the five vertebrate classes. But before we get to that, what is a vertebrate? A vertebrate is an animal that has bones. The five vertebrate classes are fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. So all the animals that are included in these five classes would have bones or something that would function the same as a bone. The first group of vertebrates we're going to discuss, they are fish because they were the first ones to evolve. Uh, fish are very simple vertebrates. They live in the water. They have gills. They never have to come to the surface. Some live in fresh water and some live in salt water. Perhaps the scariest and most well-known type of fish are sharks. Many people are afraid of sharks. Ever since the movie Jaws came out, sharks have gotten a very bad reputation uh, and people fear them so they've been hunted. One adaptation that all fish have are that they have fins to help them move. Another cool adaptation is that their bodies are covered in scales. Scales help them have an easier time moving through the water. The next group of vertebrates we're going to discuss are the amphibians. Amphibians include animals such as frogs, toads, and salamanders. One unique characteristic of these animals are that the babies live in water and have gills while the adults live on land and breathe with lungs. This is a tadpole, which is a baby frog or a baby toad. They live in the water with gills and as they get older they'll shed those gills and grow lungs as we mentioned earlier. And this salamander here is called a hellbender. Hellbenders are very important to humans because they're indicator species. They're one of the first animals that are going to start dying off when there's pollution in rivers and lakes. The next group of vertebrates we're going to discuss are reptiles. Reptiles include animals such as snakes, lizards, crocodilians, and turtles, and tortoises. Reptiles are a very diverse group of animals. There's lots of variation within the different groupings. Uh, other, others include things like Komodo dragons, crocodiles, caimans, boa constrictors, sea turtles. So you, you can see there's lots of different things. One thing that they all have in common though is they all have lungs even the ones that live in the ocean, and they all are covered with scales. The biggest difference between reptiles and amphibians are reptiles have scales, amphibians just have smooth skin. The scales allow them to live in very dry places such as deserts. The next group of vertebrates are the birds. And the biggest characteristic that birds have that no other member of the animal kingdom has are feathers. Feathers are what help a bird fly, but not all birds fly. Birds also have to lay eggs, which is a nice way to reduce weight so that makes it easier for them to fly. Many of the adaptations birds have are to help them with flight. This bird here was named Archaeopteryx, and it was the first known animal with feathers. It had a lot of features similar to that of reptiles, such as a long bony tail, teeth in its mouth, and claws. It also had features of birds, such as the beak, feathers, and talons. The final group of vertebrates are the mammals. And most people are going to tell you that the big characteristic for mammals are that they're covered with hair. However, so are some any other animals. What makes an animal a mammal is that the females have the ability to produce milk to feed their young. Mammals are broken down into three groups. The smallest group are the monotremes. Monotremes include animals like the echidna or the spiny anteater and the platypus. These are both egg-laying mammals. So after the babies are born, the parents still milk them but there's no way of getting milk to them while they're inside the egg. 
The next group of mammals are marsupials. Marsupials include animals such as kangaroos and the extinct thylacine. Marsupials are best known for having pouches. When the babies are born, they're very underdeveloped and go into the pouch and stay there and nurse and stay protected until they're big enough to start venturing out on their own. If you look closely, you can see the joey inside this mother's pouch. And the last group of mammals are the placental mammals. These include animals such as bears, cats, whales, and humans. In the case of placental mammals, while the baby is developing inside the mother, there's a cord that connects to her and the baby called a placenta, and that allows them to stay inside the mother for prolonged periods of time, unlike marsupials and monotremes. Most of the mammals that we are familiar with are placental. Please let me know if you have any questions about any animal you've seen during this presentation.